Hi, this is Rob from the Weaver Space, and today I'm going to do a basic overview of the Power Grid stack. So, first thing I'm going to do is add a stacks page to my Rapid Weaver project, and I'm going to search for the Power Grid stack. Now, I'm going to show you that Joe makes two different types of power grids. There's the blue stacks, which is the actual power grid stack, and the red icons, which are the power grid CSV stacks. Uh, we're going to be talking about the, the blue ones today. It comes with two, the power grid stack and the power grid row stack. Uh, we're not going to be talking about the other two, though. That's a different product. So um, you'll notice when you drop the power grid stack on your page, it does have a warning here that says place one power grid row stack in each drop area above. Now, it's kind of weird to say that when there's only one drop zone, but you'll notice as I add more rows that it will say it for all of the different rows, okay? Um, you'll also notice that the first row here is row zero. Now, let's dive into the stack settings, and you can change the number of rows with the first stack setting of the power grid stack. You just drag this little uh, thing left and right, and you get more rows. You can also go in there and double click, and then change the number of rows by typing in a number and hitting return. And I'm going to type in five to get five different rows. Again, you'll notice it's row zero through row four. One, two, three, four, five different rows. Again, this only says it one time, please one power grid row stack in each drop zone above. So I'm going to grab the power grid row stack and put it in the first one. If I would accidentally go to put a second one in the second row and put it there by accident, that does not mean it's in row number one. It's still in row zero and there's two of them there. So you'll want to make sure you either move it down out of the way or just delete it. Now, the power grid row settings, there's only a couple of them. One, if you want to make this a header row or not. And two is the slider type settings before, and that's for the number of columns. By default, it has three columns, column zero, column one, and column two. We are going to slide the slider left and right, and you'll notice that the columns get more and less. Now, we're going to make this a five row by six column stack. Well, let's make it a five row by four. That might be a little easier five rows by four columns, and the columns are columns zero, one, two, three, okay? The reason I did this before I went through and added one to each area is because once you have one power grid, power grid row set up, you can easily copy them to the other drop zones. And you do that by clicking and dragging. Now, if you would do that just by itself, it would just move it. But there's a little trick that your head puts into the stacks plugin that if you hold the option key down and drag, you'll notice a plus symbol appears. And if you let go in the drop zone, it copies that stack completely, the same settings and everything, that's why they all have four columns, into the area you're dropping. So holding down the option key and dragging is a great way to copy a stack. Now that only works inside of a stacks page itself. If I had two pages and wanted to copy this to another page, that would not work. And um, if you accidentally start dragging and realize, oh, I filled them all up, you can just actually let go of the option stack and the plus symbol disappears, put it back where it was, and it doesn't copy anything. Um, but copying that way is only inside of the stack page. I cannot do that from page to page. Okay, so we have our column set up. We have our row set up. Let's add some content. So I'm going to delete my search here. And... Just for ease, I'm going to add a text stack. And I'm just going to use my nice little thing, and I'm going to actually come down here and start from the bottom. And the only reason I'm starting from the bottom is because I'm using the same content. You probably wouldn't want to start from the bottom with different content, although it, it wouldn't hurt if you did either. And the reason I do this is you'll notice as I add more content in the rows above, the bottom row will scroll down. So if I would have started up on top, I would have had to scroll down to fill in all the spots. Here I have to scroll up a little bit, but um, at least I only had to do that one time. If I would have started from the top and gone down, I probably would have had to scroll a lot because as the content fills, it pushes the content down. Now let's preview this page and see how it looks. Now the Power, Power Grid stack has a nice feature that even rows, and since this is a row zero, 
um, have one color and odd rows have a different color. It makes it very easy for you to differentiate between the different rows. Now I'm going to go into edit real quick. Click on the power grid. Here's another nice little tip. If you are in the stack that you want to change settings on and go into preview and you still have the inspector up, you can change the settings. And we're going to do that right now. So let's say I don't want this blue color. Well, we find the settings for that down here. It's called even row color. And I'm going to change that to this orange color. It's a nice little orange color. Now, if I wanted to change the text inside Power Grid, you're going to have to change that on your theme. Okay, you can use some CSS, but I'm not going to get into that. This is a basic overview, not a, you know advanced overview. And I'm not going to show you how to change the, the text color with CSS. But you want to do that, you have to use the theme settings. I'm not going to change it. Um, I don't want the even or the odd road colors to be white. I'm going to make them this nice little teal color. And you'll notice some other colors or other settings and settings in here. So first, let's look at the border size. We're going to skip the header row right now. That's more of an advanced feature, and there'll be another video on how to use an, a header row coming up. But let's look at border size. So if you wanted a border between every segment, so it means between each row and each column, you just adjust the setting here to 1, and there's a thinner line. It can go all the way up to 10, and you can get a nice thick line. Now, I'm not sure if you can go above 10. I'm just going to add a 0 to make it 100. Nope, it looks like 10 is the highest setting that Joe allows of it. Okay, so you can't make the border higher than 10. I'm actually going to make it a 2. And you'll notice that when I type in a stack setting here for the size of the border, like let's change 3. I put 3 in, hasn't changed it yet. That's because for that setting to take effect, you have to either click out of it, like if I would click on a color, I'd be clicking out of it, or hit the return key, and that will set that setting. Okay, so make sure that if you're going into the, the settings this way by clicking on them, you are hitting return or going to a different setting before you think you're going to see changes. So um, there's different types of border styles, and if... Um, I clicked on this so I can't really show it to you, but let's, I think if I just type in dashed, it'll be a dashed border. Again, I have to hit return. There we go. Um, let's just hover over this and see if we can type, oh, it doesn't say this, the style of borders. Um, I'll make a fact for that, so it'll tell you the different types of borders you can type in there. Um, you can change, and let's just redo this and leave it solid. You can change the border color if you want. Let's make it a purple just to make it ugly. Okay, and you can only you can also only have a bottom border. So that'll only be in the bottom of each row. Okay? So if you only want to split up the rows and not the columns, you can do it that way. I'm going to turn that off for right now. I'm in fact going to turn off borders altogether. Um, now, no background color. If you turn that on, the background itself disappears. Okay? It still has two different colors, a, a white and a gray, but it pretty much disappears and is really hard to tell. Okay, um, I'm going to turn that back on though. Now we've gone over the row colors, but there is a hover color too. And for that to work, you have to make sure no hover is unchecked. Now if I hover over something, you'll notice this blue color highlights the row and the text turns a gray. Well. That's kind of hard on this one, so let's make it let's make it a red. Let's make it a dark red. And let's make our hover text white. So now as we hover over each one, the text changes to white and the background color changes to red. Now if you turn off background color, you will not see the background color change as I hover, but you will notice that the text changes color. It changes to white, which on most of them is very odd. All, on all, all of them, it's very hard to see. So if you do have no background color on or checked, you want to make sure you do not have the hover text white. Let's change this to black for this instance. And now as I hover, oh, I didn't change it. Sorry. There we go. Now as I hover over each one, the text, well, let's make it a different color since it's kind of hard to see black on black. Let's make it a dark red. Oops, I didn't change it again. Make it a dark red. There we go. Now as I hover over each area, you will see the text change to red. Okay? So if you have no background color on, 
make sure your hover text is not white. Um, and then show sizing tips. If you turn that on, and this will actually only work in edit mode, it comes down here and will show you some sizing tips to use with CSS. Now again, I'm not going to get into how to use CSS with this stack. It's a very basic overview here. Um, hopefully, I'll get into another video teaching you how to use CSS with the Power Grid stack, but not today. So that's pretty much it for the Power Grid stack. It's a very powerful stack to make beautiful uh, tables in your, your Rapid Weaver sites. We hope you enjoyed learning about it and uh, have a great day. Thanks.